you remember that guy who had an apple fall in his head? Lies. He only saw it fall. Isaac Newton and his first law. Ever since we invented the wheel, humans have been moving around faster and faster. More than 300 years ago, a guy called Isaac Newton came up with three laws about how things move. The first law is that a body will continue in a state of rest or uniform unaccelerated motion unless acted upon by some external force. So what's that all about? For a body to be at rest, the forces need to be balanced. Here the borders are trying to be at a state of rest. Some of them are better than others. When they do manage it, their forces are balanced. The weight of the border is balanced against the force acting up through the board. So we've seen bodies at rest, but what exactly happens when a body's in motion? Well, the forces are still in balance. To be able to go at a constant velocity, the force from the pushing of the border's leg must balance the opposing forces of friction and air resistance. Here the skater is moving at a constant velocity. The force from his legs are balanced against the forces of air resistance and the friction from the ice. This ball is in space and because there is no force or gravity acting on it, it continues in a perfectly straight line until it hits a wall. If forces are not balanced, the velocity will not be constant. When the border stops pushing with his leg, friction and air resistance win the battle and the border decelerates. Equally, when the border needs to accelerate to do a trick, the forces are not balanced. He is applying a greater force than the opposing friction. Well, that's what he'd like to do anyway. Number eight is Newton's second law. Force equals mass times acceleration. Well, that was easy. So, on to number seven. Yep, you guessed it. It's Newton's third law. These skateboards are great examples of how things move. Newton's third law states that if a body, A, exerts a force on a body, B, then B will exert an equal opposite force on body, A. Body, A, body, B. Or better known as Phil and Ollie. Can you exert a force on Ollie, please, Phil? This force provides them with the same initial acceleration. And once they've parted company, they move off with the same speed and in opposite directions. That's because the force exerted by A had an equal and opposite reaction. When Phil pushes Ollie, there is an equal and opposite force that pushes Phil back. Newton's second law states that for any force applied on an object, the acceleration is inversely proportional to the mass of the object. So here, because Phil and Ollie are roughly the same mass, assuming friction is a constant, this force provides them with the same initial acceleration, making them travel a similar distance from their starting point. What if we increase the mass on one of the boards? How will this affect acceleration? We're going to bring in another skater. Right, and if you can step in. All right, guys. They did both move away, but this time the board with two skaters didn't move away with as much initial acceleration as the board carrying one skater. So what's happening here? When Phil pushes against Ollie and Martin, Ollie and Martin push back with the same force but in the opposite direction. Remembering Newton's second law, their initial acceleration will be inversely proportional to their mass. And because Ollie and Martin are about twice the mass of Phil, assuming friction is a constant, the force can only accelerate Ollie and Martin half as much as Phil. And so Phil travels twice the distance in the same time. This is exactly the same principle that gets rockets into space. Newton's third law can help us to understand how we can change this plastic bottle to turn it into a water rocket. When I first start pumping, the increase in air pressure pushing down on the water is being held back by the bung. But as the pressure increases, eventually it's too much for the bung and the water comes out with a huge force. This is when Newton's third law comes in. The rocket exerts a force on the water, pushing it downwards. The water exerts an equal but opposite force on the rocket, pushing it upwards. This is exactly the same principle that gets rockets into space. 
The burning fuel is forced downwards. It exerts an equal but opposite force on the rocket, forcing it upwards. 